It gets easier, but it never goes away. It's like some people go, it's, oh, it's been 14 years that long, but it still seems like yesterday to us. And, um, it's still hard. The mother of Justine Vandershoot is calling for justice tonight ahead of a parole hearing that could set one of her daughter's killers free. In 2003, the 17-year-old Justine was strangled and buried alive in a high-profile murder case that stunned our area. Her boyfriend and his roommate were convicted of the heinous crime. New tonight, CBS 13 Steve Large joins us now with the family's emotional effort now to keep their daughter's killers locked up for life. Steve. Yeah, and that family also tonight is sharing new details about the plot that led to their daughter's murder as convicted killer Brandon Fernandez prepares to ask for his release. I mean, just to see him hear his part of the involvement and just his voice, and it's, uh, it's going to be a challenge. I don't feel that he has any remorse because I haven't seen it and he hasn't shown it. It is another step on a painful journey for the Vandershoot family. It's just the emotions again and just all coming up again. Justine Vandershoot's mother and sister, nearly 15 years later, reliving the murder that took this bright-eyed 17-year-old too soon at the hands of her own boyfriend, Daniel Bessemer, and his roommate, Brandon Fernandez. Both pled guilty to her murder in 2003, Fernandez to a 15-year-to-life sentence, his parole hearing now just weeks away. This is KOVR 13 News at 10. Mark Curtis. Well, Michelle, day four that Justine Vandershoot is missing. CBS 13 reported extensively on what began as a search for Justine. We're going to find her. She's going to get away. Justine's body was found two weeks later in a shallow grave in Applegate. She had been strangled and buried alive. Now the family is sharing new details from the case that never went to trial. That investigators learned the convicted duo had dug the hole two weeks before the murder. And that they had tapped the family's phone line nine months earlier. Listening to calls Justine was making, their motive, she was planning a breakup. All along, even before it happened, they were listening to all of our conversations. Now, cherished family photos help recall the joy Justine brought to the world. This picture is at our cabin. And serve as inspiration to keep her killers locked up. It's going to be my family's fight for the rest of our lives. Now, Saturday, the family will be holding a candlelight vigil at Clipper Gap, the park and ride there. Now, that's where Justine's missing truck was first spotted back in 2003. They'll also have these petitions to sign that will be handed to the parole board as part of their effort to prevent Brandon Fernandez's release. 15 to life for murder seems like a really light sentence. You know, both the partners there agreed to that plea deal before mm. it ever went to trial. So a lot of the information that the investigators learned never got disclosed in a, in a case. Interesting. All right. All right, Steve, thanks very much for that. Appreciate that.